one of the conversations we all we had many times as we were getting ready to get married was how many kids are we gonna have I was at the two and we're good Veronica was at seven plus so that was a conversation that I decided we're gonna have to have again when we get married almost as soon as we got married uh, we began to talk about what did God have for our family and we thought they'd come with by next year we'd have kids we were excited about pursuing a family and growing our family and having kids. And one year turned into two years, turned into three years. And we're like, God, what is going on? And I remember waking up, being waking up in the middle of the night and hearing the Lord say, it's all kingdom, it's all me. We were, we were saying, God, we know what you said. You said it's all kingdom, it's all you. And yet here we are in this place of not seeing anything happening. And it was very confusing and challenging. Younger couples are starting to get pregnant. Um, some of them having their first, now having their second. And I remember just feeling really sad. I remember um, just really feeling, honestly, like, God, where are you? Like, God, I know you're good, but it's really hard to believe that right now. It's really hard to feel that right now when I just, I don't see you. The sense of loss, the sense of waiting, the sense of what is going on. And so here I am trying to be a good husband and upbeat and encouraging, but at the same time trying to identify with the pain she was really in. I learned a lot about my own heart and ways that I needed to grow. I believed God was actually increasing my heart in that season for what he wanted to do in the future. Because of this kind of waiting period that we, we were in, it made us pause and think and really ask the Lord, okay, God, how do you want to grow our family? And um, it led us down the road to start to pursue adoption. And I remember Stephen being a little hesitant. One, because I had this word from God and I thought it was going to come in the way of normal pregnancy. And I didn't want to miss out on anything. But I also didn't know how I would be as a father to an adoptive child. Would I be able to love in the same way? And I know that might seem silly, but that was how I felt. And it caused me to hesitate a little bit. But the more we talked and the more I recognized all that we'd done in the past, ministering the Father's heart to so many, I realized this was the Father's heart. This was the perfect expression of it. In fact, this was what God was all about, adopting kids. We're adopted kids into his family. Um, and so we became certified adoptive parents. And so now we're certified adoptive parents. Now we just have to wait for our match. You know, there's this kind of sense of anticipation and like, this is gonna happen. All right, you know, things are moving forward now. And so nine months pass, a year pass, and we got a couple calls and they didn't work out. And so it's the sense again of loss. It's the sense again of something that we're believing and we're hoping for, something that we don't even have yet, and then it's gone, it's taken away. And having to process through that, having to trust all over again, um, yeah, it could really send you on a real roller coaster. And people are wondering, what's wrong? Why aren't you adopting? What's going on? But it's really quite a process. and. It requires a match to be made and we just hadn't fit the criteria for a match yet. And so we just kind of said, okay, God, we're not closing that door. But if that door isn't the only door, what are you saying? We could do one of two things in this place of believing. We could hunker down and just wait and just not do anything because we didn't want to mess up and miss what God's doing. Or we could just keep living our life fully for Him. And all these ministry opportunities come up, one after another, to go to Thailand, to go to Amsterdam, to go to the Philippines, and specifically even working um, in, in two of those places, working with kids. And, you know, part of it is I just felt like this sense of, um, you know, waiting, but it was this active waiting. It was this, you know, we're not just sitting here on a couch, like waiting, okay, God, when are you bringing them? But He's calling us out. and. Um, you know, part of it felt like I want to be home just waiting, but part of it knew that God had an assignment for us. He still had something for us, something to accomplish, something to do. We didn't stop ministering. We didn't sit back and say, oh, we just got to wait for God to come through. 
nor did we let fear grip us and say, man, we can't travel, we can't do X, Y, or Z. What if we become pregnant or we get a call about the adoption? We just made a decision that he was going to be in charge of this season. And we were gonna take every opportunity to continue to do what he'd called us to do. And I remember um, it was actually right before um, my um, the trip before I went to the Philippines, I got a prophetic word that God was calling me as a mother to the nations. And I remember in that moment being like, God, but we're believing for our own kids. Like, you know, like, why are you calling me, sending me as a mom to the nations? Like, I just wanna be a mom here. And yet I remember that moment, and that was before I left, and then being in the Philippines and ministering to kids and just remembering like, you know, part of this was, God, this isn't a sacrifice. This, this isn't, this is my, this is an act of love. This is my act of worship that where we're still believing and waiting, we get to serve and love on these kids that, you know, don't have somebody loving and, 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 and serving them that don't have somebody introducing them to the heart of the father. And so we just gave ourselves fully to seeing father manifested wherever we were. It became the rallying cry. It became the reason why we were doing what we were doing, to see the Father's heart manifested, to see others encounter the Father's heart. I speak to barrenness. I come and life within. Come love you desolate. Spring up you living well. I speak to barrenness. I come and life within Come love you desolate Fling wide you ancient gates Healing power flow like a river Monday, December 18th, 4.03 p.m. And we're on our way. One of the farthest steps that we've come so far in this adoption journey and just seeing what, what the Lord's gonna unfold, you know? Continue. Lord, we just commit this in your hands, God. Yeah. Just thank you for ordering this meeting. Lord, thank you, Lord. Lord, just give us wisdom to know what to ask, what to say, what yeah. not to say. And we just really need to hear from you, God. And we welcome you in this meeting. We thank you for coming with us on this yeah. journey. <laughs> But ups and downs. Yeah, for sure. Some days with two ups, five downs. <laughs> to it's a lot of steps to walk through now. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Today's a bit harder day for me because mm. we realized that we missed the time frame to easily renew our uh, adoption certification, so we have to go through the whole process. We're gonna see what we can do about that, but that is a bit frustrating. That's part of the journey right now, so we're trying to figure this whole thing out. It's not always mm -hmm. um, sure what's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday I woke up not knowing what to feel. Other days I, I feel like I've been, you know, I feel real peace, but yesterday I just didn't know what to feel. What would you want baby Jenks to yeah. know that you're thinking about right now, yeah. like as you guys are making it? Yeah, got it. We want you to understand God's faithfulness to us in this season. You're not here yet, but already we're believing, we're trusting. We know that in the season of waiting, God's been preparing us and he's been preparing us to receive children. So baby Jenks, we're ready for you. We're ready for you. We've made a place for you in our hearts and in our home. Hello? Hey, it's Steven and Veronica. Hey man, you know we've been working on that testimony video about our journey believing the Lord for children and we're trying to figure out what to do for the ending. We just got a call from our lawyers that there's a birth mom who's looking to place her child in adoption. It's so crazy, it's so insane, and it's like, you know, a month away, not even, but we think this might be it. We have all the green lights and now we're just kind of taking a step and trusting the Lord and see what he might do, but it's just, we had to call you. We're so excited. I think this could be the one. We've been waiting for a long time, and this has come upon us so suddenly. In fact, there is an adoption match possible right now. So we're asking you if you would be a part of bringing this child 
our child into our home to give them a fresh start. So let hope